Businesses are responding to rapid cultural and demographic change, but what does this mean for the next generation of leaders? A new report by Odgers Bernson, in conjunction with Cass Business School, aims to find out. I'm joined by Richard Bogus rolf Chairman of Odgers Bernson, and Professor Cliff Oswick, who's Deputy Dean here at Cass Business School, to discuss. First of all, Richard, why did you decide to commission this study? Well, because this goes right to the heart of what we in Odgers Bernson and what the Cass Business School are all about. Our business is identifying leaders and theirs is developing them. And as the baby boomers fade and a new generation comes into prominence, we both felt that it was important for us to understand as much as we could about the aspirations of those who are going to be led and the characteristics of those who are going to be the leaders of tomorrow. So Cliff, in what way does the average Generation X or Y differ from the average baby boomer? They differ in terms of their attitudes to work. Uh, they differ insofar as work is seen as something which is about a career and a loyalty to an organisation by a baby boomer. Generation Xs and Ys have less organisational commitment, they tend to have less respect for power, and they tend to be more flexible in terms of their career aspirations. And what are the implications for businesses and their leaders? Well, I think there's significant implications for how leaders lead. Um, traditionally, leaders have been very charismatic, very directive, very kind of gung-ho and taking control. I think Generation Xs and Ys are less respectful of that style of leadership and their expectations are to be included in decision making. So participative styles of leadership, processes which seek to involve and engage employees in decision making, in creative problem solving and so on. So Richard, what skills will leaders need? As a new generation comes into play, the leaders are going to need skills that are going to be effective with that generation. And there's a good deal of evidence because of the makeup of that generation. More women, more minorities, more mix of people from around the world, movement of people. That sensitivity to culture, EQ, a less commanding approach to command, as it were, uh, more participation, a more democratic approach to leadership is more likely to be effective. And there are a good many pointers in our study to that. And how prepared are organisations for these changes? Well, our study answers that question. And about 60% don't think that they're prepared. So are companies vulnerable? Yes, companies which don't change are always vulnerable. But they will change. The successful ones will. So how can companies manage the transition between these generations of leaders? Effective succession management is one of the keys to success in every business, in every organisation at any time. So this isn't, a, this isn't a new thing, and this isn't specifically connected with the passing of the baby boomers. But the critical thing is that they should recognise that they need to identify the leaders of tomorrow and ensure that they're given the appropriate skills and experience to do the job. And that, of course, has always been the case. And Cliff, what are the gender implications of this report? Well, the report is very clear. We need more women managers, and there will be more women managers in the future. And those abilities of women managers are nicely aligned to the needs of Generation X and Ys. Uh, they're more participative in their leadership style. They have a sensitivity to risk. They're less hyper-competitive. And all those things align themselves with a more democratic, participative workplace. Richard and Cliff, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.